Hello there, welcome back to my channel. I am Leo Bors, and today we got part 7 of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow directly from my uh, live stream. And remember, if you want to catch me live, you can go to the link down below and give me a follow so you know when uh, I'm live. And uh, if you like this video, well, there's a button for that, that thumbs up button, just smash it and consider subscribing to the channel all that said let's dive right into the game miss hopkins looks more anxious every time i see her where is lord panswick sorry ma'am i can't talk miss fenchurch is ever so mad at me okay let's start with the woman in charge mm, large flowers some what's fine this looking flowers sorry grab them some fine looking flowers no Let's start with the woman in charge then. Miss Fenchurch is a cruel looking woman, her face set in a permanent scowl. Oh, I know the type. Hello there. Bugger off, you whelp. This is private land. I was wondering if it might be possible to speak with Lord Panswick. Are you deaf, girl? Don't make me fetch the guards. They're armed, you know. Oh, well, yeah, bring them. I need people. By Christ, you're like a dog with a bone. Do you want to get yourself shot? I can assure you the only things getting shot around here are the pheasant. And perhaps the odd grouse. <laughs> Greetings, my lady. Lord James Panswick, at your disposal. Your Lord Panswick? Oh, so As he... Even breathe. You could have told me that before. What is life without mystery, Miss Bateman? A predictable stagger to the grave? I was imagining someone... Much older and far less handsome? Yes, to be frank. Actually? See? I can read your mind, my dear. Now, may I ask, what brings you to my manor? I wanted to ask if I could borrow some of your labourers. Oh? For what purpose? I intend to excavate Hobbs Barrow tomorrow, and I'm in need of some assistance. An excavation? How very delightful. We're in the middle of our own works right this minute. Follow me, Miss Bateman. Come along. I promise I don't bite. So, that's Lord's basket. I knew it. I, I knew it. For generations, this chapel was a place of unique devotion. This was until some of my more ungrateful ancestors forgot him and abandoned it. Why did they abandon it? Men of great wealth and power can grow so comfortable that they forget they still need the divine. The sacrifices required to maintain such a relationship were no longer being made. The chapel soon turned to rubble, and with time, even the villagers forgot him. His influence endured, but... Only with the isolated few who lived on the very fringes of these moors. Believe it or not, my family's fortunes have dwindled ever since. Since I succeeded my father, it has become my life's work to restore this place of worship. With this sacred place rebuilt, he shall be venerated once more, and the name Panswick shall be uttered again across all of England. He guided the hands of my ancestors. Now it is time for him to guide us. Some is a godless place. Somehow. Have you forgotten about Saint Edmund? Yeah, I don't think he's referring to God. God. I shall bring him back to these lands, and this chapel shall be his seat once again. A new world. But it seems Ooh. like you wish to bring back the past. From out of the old world shall come the new, a greater truth. But I digress. Horace, my dear fellow. Aye, your lordship. This fair lady here is in need of some assistance. Would you and your chaps be up for a spot of digging at Hobbs Barrow tomorrow? Hobbs Barrow? Ah, your lordship, tis no bother. Good man. You're in luck, my dear. These are my finest, and they're all yours. Thank you. I am grateful. On one condition. Yes? I've heard wonders about Mary de Plance's Bakewell puddings. I'd rather like to try them for myself. Your Lordship, you're giving me the help of your men in exchange for cakes? Yes. But 
Farewell, my beauty. Wait. Okay, this guy is not at all how people describe him. And he hid the fact he is Lord Lord Panswick. Uh well, this guy is really crazy. Okay? First of all, I don't think he's referring to the same God when we are talking about religion and Father Roach. I bet that this chapel was a chapel for an old uh, God, an ancient God that it's tied somehow to Hobbes Barrow. And he's restoring it, and the guy is really crazy. He's a, you know, your classic uh, Call of Cthulhu cultist, but with a lot of money and influence. The men look like they've spent many a long day exposed to the harsh moorland weather. Is his lordship joking about the Bakewell puddings? No, miss. His lordship is a man of folly. How ridiculous! He treats you all right if you do what he asks. They have some decent equipment here. It will be more than useful for the excavation. Okay, now he fucking guy wants a Bakewell pudding from Mrs. De Plancy, but I don't have money. And he, why the fuck he doesn't just go and buy one or send one of your employees to find one fucking pie? Good day. Oh, another strumpet looking to find her way into his lordship's bedchambers, I see. I'm nothing of the sort. Ha! I've seen plenty of your sort before. Okay, fuck off, lady. Good luck, girl. No, oh, she didn't need to jump anymore. Must belong to Mrs. De Plancy. Oh dear to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. De Plancy. Do you still have some of your homemade Bakewell puddings, Mrs. De Plancy? Oh, you're too late, pet. I've a few left, but they're set aside for someone else. Might you please be able to bake me some more? Sorry, I, I, I'm not in the mood for baking. Truth be told, my dear husband Albert passed away recently. My thoughts are all over the shop. I'm so sorry to hear that. Aye, he's in God's hands now. Were you married to Albert a long time? Aye, too many years to count. He was a cobbler here in Bewley. The most dashing cobbler in all of England, I used Oh, to he's a cobbler. <sighs> Love is precious. That's why the, 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 the shop is closed. Replace the hole it leaves in your heart. I can relate to that in my own way. I wish you strength in this difficult time. Thank you. With God's blessing. Yeah, I'll... no wonder that cover show is always closed. May I ask who you have set aside the puddings for? Oh, uh, Father Roach. He won't be back until tomorrow. Won't they be off by then? Not at all. Besides, pet, as I told you, I'm not in the mood for all this baking chatter. Sorry, Mrs. Deplancy. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Okay, how can I get her in the mood? That's not mine to interfere with. For baking. So, her husband was the cobbler. Hmm, no one here. Fresh Scotch eggs! Hmm. Oh, maybe the, the fresh 
grave is the, from the cobbler? He died really recently then. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. He looks like a rather shady character. The simple wooden cross bears a small plaque on which is inscribed the name Albert de Plancy. Relative, are you? No, just looking. He were the cobbler. Who's going to mend me boots now? <laughs> hmm. Hello. Does this fresh grave belong to Mrs. de Plancy's late husband? Aye. Rather bare, isn't it? My job is to dig the graves, not decorate them. Goodbye. There are. Hmm. Decorate. This is it. To do. By the way, okay. Mm, decorate. We need to decorate that. Maybe. But where I can find, I can find some flowers. Hmm. Let's talk. I can't to the think bird. of anything else to talk about right now. Oh, I saw some big flowers on this guy. It's the manor of oh, Dorf Panswick. Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. Selling them at a steal. Would miss like to buy some? No, thank you. I'll let the worm enjoy his new home. It's the apple I gave to Jane. Oh, I still need uh, something for the horse so he doesn't kick me when when I grab a hair. Oh, who's this guy? I've not seen him around the village before. Good day. Hello there. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ralph. Not seen you around before. I'm just visiting. What brings you to the market today? I purchased a Scotch egg for me tea. You want a bite? No, thank you. I'm looking for some help with an excavation tomorrow. Might you be interested? Sorry, miss. I've already got my own job. Enjoy your Scotch egg. I will. I've not seen him around the village before. Okay. No, we don't have anything to entice him. So, okay, let's first um, try and go to the produce to Mrs. Uh, sorry to the manor again and see if we can procure flowers maybe that will help this is the plan see some fine looking flowers can I cut them I could just pick this up some fine looking flowers. Some fine looking flowers. And why aren't you picking them up? Some fine. I don't wish to provoke her wrath any further. Thank you for bringing me here, Miss Tompkins. You're welcome, ma'am. Some fine looking flowers. I could just pick this up. Some fine looking flowers. Well, but for some reason, I cannot pick them up. Okay, let's let's talk again with with uh, the old lady. to your pet. Hello, Mrs. De Plancy. I saw your late husband's grave, Mrs. De Plancy. I am very sorry for your loss. Thank you, pet. I'm ashamed to say I couldn't afford now more than a simple wooden cross. You were a colourful man, our Albert. He deserves better. He loved his flower beds. 
He's only been gone a fortnight, and already his plants have gone to rot. May the Lord forgive me. Plants are difficult to maintain. I'm sure Albert would understand. His precious hippie astrum were the first to go. I would have loved to lay one on his grave. What does a hippie astrum flower look like? Oh, beautiful things. Bright and there. big. Tall stems topped with large red flowers. Hard to grow in this climate. They were his pride and joy. The remarkable thing is there's no scent to him. That's why he loved him so much. You see, he hated anything that smelled sickly sweet. Hippie Astrum were just perfect. Let me know if you come across one, won't you? Of course, Mrs. Deplancy. Thanks for your time. Yes. Be with you. So we could not pick them up because we didn't know that we needed, but I suspected that we need it well yeah i hope oh something something tells me I, i'm going to have to deal with that old lady pick that flower up these matched the description of the flowers mrs de Plancy mentioned there's no scent you get away from my hippie astrum. Oh, fuck. I knew oh, it. Move. Well, that confirms it. Hmm. I need to distract this woman with something. What could it be? Good day. Hello. I really need one of those hippie astrum flowers. Why? It's a long story. Might you please be able to get one for me? Or distract Miss Fenchurch so I can take one? Those flowers are Miss Fenchurch's favourites. She spends hours looking after them. Sorry, Mom. It's just that I'm so worried about Mr. Ambrose. The milkman? Aye. We were to run away together today. I see. I'm worried sick that he stood me up. Oh. Mr. Ambrose, this job is all I have. I can't risk losing it over a flower. Well, now I have to find the milkman. I'm sorry, Miss Tompkins. I still haven't seen him. Do you think he's abandoned me? I'm sure that's not the case. He must have been delayed somewhere. Could you try to find him for me, ma'am? Maybe he's uh... the red-headed guy? Oh, please, ma'am. I'd do anything for you if you found my love. I can try. Oh, thank you. You're ever so kind, Mom. Goodbye. I'd best get back to work. Okay, I'll be back. Just as the Terminator said. Okay, I'm pretty sure this mysterious red-headed guy is Mr. Ambrose. I hope it. to God he is. Nope. Good day. Hello there. Do you know Mr. Ambrose, the milkman? I do, yes. Have you any idea where he might be? He is usually here by now. So I heard. He normally arrives by the road to the east of Bewley. Thank you. Enjoy your Scotch egg. I will. Okay, he's not him, but at, at least he was helpful. And it's flashback time. There we are. Your shells are looking much more interesting now. I pestered Mother for years to let me bring some of your treasures here. I think she's worried that I'd want to follow in your path. She has hidden most of your discoveries away. I had to beg her to bring me to visit you, you know. I shouldn't worry you with all that. Do you know that I have a story for each of these pots? Well, I don't know if they're all true, but they are my memories. Even though I was so young, I still remember our adventures together. 
Would you like me to share my memories of them? Well, I'm going to, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Hmm, I think you brought this one back from a trip abroad. I would have loved to go with you, but Mother didn't want me to. I remember you being so proud of it. It looks ancient. You were incredibly excited about this one. I hadn't gone on an expedition with you yet. You were so happy about it, showing it to Mother and I. You didn't stop talking about it for hours. I thought, how can Daddy be so excited over some old broken pottery? But it wasn't long until I understood. We talked about this one already. The red urn you buried in the garden for me. It seems like such a long time ago. We found this one together in that mucky old barrow near Avebury. I think it was the second time you'd taken me on a dig with you. I remember you bringing it up to your face to look inside and shrieking in horror. There's a bloody rat in there, you screamed. <laughs> Mother was so angry when you brought this one home, wasn't she? William, that simply will not do. It's taking up all the space on the mantelpiece. Once you moved it to your study, I remember creeping in to take a peek at it. This is from the first dig I remember you taking me on. The excavation of West Kennet Longbarrow. I found it wedged behind a stone as you ate your sandwich. You said, now there's a tiny urn for a tiny girl. I almost forgot. While I was searching for your pots in the shed, I found one of your manuscripts. I thought Mother had burnt all your notebooks, but she missed one. It was an account of barrows across the east of England. I managed to read it all before Mother took it away. Daddy, it was fascinating. I've decided that is what I want to do with my life. I'm going to travel the country, excavating and documenting my own finds. Well, as soon as I'm old enough to escape mother, that is. When you're feeling better, we can go out on expeditions together again, just like we used to. I promise you'll get better, Daddy. I'll do whatever it takes to make it so. something ahead on the road yeah that's some kind of uh, carriage hopefully mr. Ambrose My God. what the fuck mr. Ambrose what the fuck I man Okay, have a knife. Let's help the poor man out. Please hold still. I I'm going to cut you free. He had been so tightly bound that I could barely cut through without hurting him further. His mouth was stuffed full of flowers of a most peculiar scent. I was dismayed at such savagery and wondered if the feral folk Father Roach had mentioned were responsible for this abhorrent act. I thought exactly. After some considerable effort, I managed to cut him free. Are you all right? Oi, who were lost in visions of, of hell, of hell itself, the devil. I saw the devil. Who did this to you? I don't remember. Oh, the terrible sights I saw. I won't forget them till my last breath. Are you Mr. Ambrose? Oi. Yes, yes, Edward Ambrose. You were to meet Miss Tompkins today. Oh, my love. Oh, my darling love. Let me take you to her. Here, take my hand. As we made the arduous trek to Panswick Manor, I probed Mr. Ambrose on who had done this to him. He insisted that he didn't remember anything, except for his nightmarish visions. Probably because of the flowers they made in it. My love. Eddie! 
Jesus, what happened to you? Were you in a fight? No, to fret not, my love. I thought you'd abandoned me. Never. Thank your friend here for helping me out of a bind. Oh, Eddie. A bind. Let's get out of here, my darling. Hang on. You thieving bitch! How have you got for garters? Oh, stick it where the sun don't shine, you bitter old sow! <laughs> Here you are, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Tompkins. Mm. No, thank you for finding my poor Eddie. Oi, thank you, lass. Let's go, Eddie. I'm never setting foot on this godforsaken estate again. Good luck, you two. Okay, we have the flower. Now let's get back to Mrs. De Plancy. Convince her to bake me some pies. I have something for you. You found them. Oh, you dear child. Let's take them straight to Albert. You'll come with me. Won't you? Of course, Mrs. De Plancy. You know, the things I miss most about him are the things that used to annoy me. The click of his jaw as he chewed his sandwiches, leaving his tools all around the house. The way he'd never back down from an argument. It's just quiet at home now. Silence. The funny thing is, that's what he always craved. Peace and quiet. He were a good man, our Albert. Sounds like he was. I'm so sorry. Do you fear death, pet? It's the part in between that concerns me most. Whatever do you mean? My father had an accident many years ago. Ever since, he's been in a state where he can neither speak nor move. Oh, that does sound dreadful. I'm sorry, pet. I believe his mind to still be active, but perhaps this is the worst of all fates. To be trapped in one's own body and unable to express oneself while the world continues around you. That is what I fear. Maybe he'll get better one day. I'd do anything to make it so. Those flowers look beautiful. They do. Albert will be smiling down on us. Pet, I left me basket inside the church. You'll find some big well puddings in there. You can have them. Oh, you... I insist. You've brought an ounce of happiness into my day, dear. It's only just that I return some. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. To be truthful with you, I was saving him for myself. I shouldn't be so selfish. Lord forgive me. You're nothing of the sort. I'll stay here with Albert a bit longer. You go back to your day, Pitt. Lord be with you. And you, Mrs. De Plancy. Okay, we did a good deed. And got our pies for it. Well, not one. Two good deeds. We were reunited two lovers and brought some happiness to an old lady here they are now let's go to the manor bring the pies to his lordship The vision returns. I come bearing gifts. Freshly baked gifts? Yes. Three of Mrs. De Plancy's famous Bakewell puddings. <laughs> you are an amusing creature, Thomasina. What do you mean? You must think me a scoundrel of the highest order for asking you to undertake such folly. Yes. Of course I would have lent you my men either way. I 
merely desired an excuse to share a cake with you. Lord Panswick. I take no pleasure in watching you scurry about Bewley to fulfill my every whim. Or do I? I do not find this amusing in the slightest. You have no idea what I had to go through to get these for you. Oh, I do, I do. And that's what I admire about you. Tenacity. Even in the face of something you know to be absurd. Yes. You don't give up, do you? Never. Though in this case, I ought to have. <laughs> now then, will you share one of these tempting confections with me? Uh, why not? Let's try to find out more about this dude. Why not? Splendid. I'm glad the rain doesn't put you off. You like to live a little dangerously, don't you, Thomasina? Let us stroll to the back. That sounds nice. We walked side by side down to the beck, his hand occasionally brushing my own. Despite Lord Panswick's entertaining company, I had an overwhelming feeling that time was being wasted. We ate those cakes down by the beck, and as he attempted the most charming lines he could muster upon me, I only had one thing on my mind. Father, could he be saved from his suffering? was the answer to be found within Hobbs Barrow. I ached to find out. I didn't even notice the taste of those famous puddings. Seemingly disheartened by my lack of enthusiasm, Lord Panswick soon marched me back toward the ruined chapel. Chaps, listen up. You're to assist Miss Bateman's excavation tomorrow. What time, Miss Bateman? Early morning, if you don't mind. We'll be there whenever you need us, miss. Hobbs Barrow. On the Bryden estate, if I'm not mistaken. We'll be there. Take your tools with you. Miss Bateman will need every assistance we can provide her with. It's no bother. Splendid. Thank you, lads. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll see you later, my dear. Thank you, Lord Panswick. We're finishing up here, miss. See you tomorrow morning, all right? Certainly. I appreciate your help. Well, that's a relief to have my crew assembled for tomorrow. I fear Miss Fenchurch might come at me with her pots and pans. It's best I stay out here. Okay, I still need to fetch a uh, horse hair to fix, to fix the fiddle. The fiddle bowl. But I need something to distract the horse. What could that be? Some food, but I don't have any food. Okay, the woman with the the cart is gone. Good day. Hello there. I found Mr. Ambrose. Aye, I saw the two of you walk past not long ago. What the hell happened to him? He refused to say, but I found him tied to a post. Jesus. Have you any idea who might have done such a thing? No, lass. Where did he take him? To a friend. He'll be fine. Grand. Enjoy your scotch egg. I will. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bateman. I've recruited the help of some local laborers to help with the excavation. Marvelous. When do we start? Tomorrow morning, first thing. Wonderful. Can I count on your assistance? Of course. I'll meet you here at the Plough and Furrow. Thank you for your time. Hi, Miss Bateman. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. As long as she shows up. There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. Is this um man, is this this is an Arthur? Who is this guy? Oh, this is the guy that plays with the knife, right? Hello there. Yes. 
My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ted? Ted Cross? Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you a local, Mr. Cross? Oh, no. I'm just passing through. I'm a musician. Just myself, me guitar, and me horse. Are you a travelling musician? Aye. I've been playing a new song tonight. I've just finished the lyrics. What's it about? You'll have to come listen. Is that your horse stationed in the alley? Aye. Thistlecrack is her name. That's an unusual name for a horse. Aye. It were what she were called when I bought her. Glutton would be a better name. She likes her treats. But it feels wrong to change it. What do you make of Bewley? Can't say that I know much about this place. I don't usually travel this far south. I see. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have, miss. What is it? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Make sure you watch my performance later, won't you? I'll try. Okay, so... The horse... I don't need to use the filthy lavatories. ...likes his treats. You don't need to use the filthy lavatories, but girl, you have been in this place for two days and I haven't seen you pee or poo. The horse has been provided with some drinking water. I suspect the barrels are empty, otherwise the locals would be rolling them into their cellars. It's my crate of excavation tools. Okay, he... where I could find treats for that horse. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. There's nothing else I wish. The project. I really don't want a mutton pie or a scotch egg. Hmm. Let's see. How can... Let's check the to-do list. Investigate. Explore beautifully the surrounding area. I should be careful to leave no stone unturned, so to speak. Investigate local folklore. Um, and fix... The fiddle bowl. Yeah, but how? How do I get the horse hair without him taking my head off? There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. I haven't seen Arthur since that uh, crazy, uh, weird spell. He he had. I have nothing else to ask. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed, no good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. They look some... Mm. The produce is... Mutton pies! Okay, I found the owner of the horse. He tells me he likes to eat his treats, but I don't wish to lose an eye. I'll have to gain her trust. Yeah, but how do I find her treats? My mother has a similar one. I prefer my tea hot and fresh. A heap of glistening sugar cubes. Hands off me, sugar! I think this is supposed to be for all the patrons, sir. I said hands off! Come on, Joe. Be nice to our visitors. Ha! 
This place has gone to buggery. All right, then we can go to the horse now. Okay, girl. Here's your treat. Here you go. Eat this. Good girl. Hopefully that's gained some trust between us. I can't rip the hair from her tail with my bare hands. With the knife then? I don't wish to carry around my heavy excavation tools. I've managed to cut off a few lengthy strands. Okay, now we let's mix the horse hair with the wax. There we are. This should make sufficient bowstring now. Now we have a bowstring and fix the fiddle bow. I've done it. The bowstring seems to hold on sufficiently. Uh, now let's go to well the certain the mushrooms the place where I see where did I see that girl again? Uh near the well let's go to the mushroom circle for starters. Oh uh, I think she was on the way to Leonard's shoulders house. There she is. Come on, girl. I got your fiddle bow fixed. Look what I have for you. Hey, come back here. Okay. Fuck. My head is spinning. What happened? Hello? That was weird. Where did she go? The girl left her fiddle behind. I'll take it with me in case I see her again. I want to understand what just happened. It's getting dark and cold. Time to head back to the plow and furrow. Oh, what, ha what happened? Okay, I clicked outside of the window. I suppose Mrs. De Plancy lives here. This is the cobbler's. I can't take the sign, nor do I want to. The sign is in a shabby state, but the shop appears to be a cobbler's. Yeah, so I suppose Mrs. De Plancy lives here in the top floor. Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. Your Lordship. Stanley, my good man. To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Your Lordship? I've come to wish Miss Bateman good fortune for her grand excavation tomorrow. I'm really rather curious as to what she might turn up. As am I, Your Lordship. An exciting time for Bewley. Wouldn't you agree, Stanley? Yes, your lordship. 
very, very exciting. My dear, please, allow me the pleasure of buying you a drink. A welcome antidote to the wind's bite, wouldn't you say, Stanley? Yes, indeed, your lordship. No, thanks. I should keep a clear head for tomorrow. Enough of weird things. I drank a lot last night. I wasted time working eating pies. And now I had a weird episode where she passed out hearing a fiddle. No, thanks. Miss Bateman, you're no fun. I should keep a clear head for tomorrow. Good thinking. In that case, I shall bid thee the fondest of farewells. May you conquer Hobbs Barrow and find all that you desire. Thank you, your lordship. I've reminded my chaps there to meet you at Hobbs Barrow in the morning. Thank you again, Lord Panswick. Till we meet again, fête de beau rêve. Mr. Shoulder. Your lordship. Okay, that was weird. Let's talk to Leonard about it. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. Are you prepared for the excavation tomorrow, Mr. Shoulder? Aye. Truth be told, I was worried about me health, but I'll be reporting for duty. Capital. Thank you for your time. Aye, Miss Bateman. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. You've changed your tune, Stanley. An exciting time for Bewley. I thought you didn't want me to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Well, uh, I. Uh, mm -hmm. What can I get you? I'm fine for now, thank you. Yeah, this is the woman from the stall. I'd like to avoid speaking to her. Maybe she didn't notice that I swapped the herbs, but it's not worth the risk. They are engaged in an intense discussion. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here? Leave me be, lass. Let's talk to our good Arthur. Tom, seen him. Okay. Arthur. I've remembered something. He's super what drunk it, again. Not here. Meet me outside in the alley. Okay. He's stinking drunk, but let's hear what he has to say. What is it? First of all, I must apologize to you. That night we met, when I vanished. Yes? Well, there were a man in the loo. A hooded man. He threatened me with a beating if I told you anything about what I saw. Oh, Arthur, that's terrible. What did you see? That's the thing. I hadn't the foggiest idea what he were on about. It was a drink, you see. I'm an embarrassment, Thomasina. No, you're not, Arthur. Here's what I need to tell you. I've remembered what you were on about. Oh? I, standing in the woods today, I knew there was something. I waited. I concentrated. And it finally came back to me. Please, you're keeping me in some serious suspense here. All right, all right. It were a couple of days before I met you. Okay. So he was actually trying to remember something. It was not a spirit Hurry spell. Now, I'm not as quick as I used to be. This leg is getting worse by the day. Yes, yes. I'm constantly made aware of your failing health. Do not fear. You said he has promised you the reward of your return strength. Aye, and he can't come soon enough. Are you sure that it must be her blood? Aye, she's family. And she gets here in two days? Aye. We must bring her to the site as soon as she arrives. No, no, no. Your lordship, with all due respect, we've been through this. We need to ease her into the idea. She would laugh in our faces if we just asked for it. Who said we would ask? He told me that she needs to give it willingly. This little scheme of yours better work, Leonard. 
It will, your lordship. We've got the perfect bit. <gasps> Wait. Who goes there? Oh. Ah, a moonlight tryst. After something, are you, Mr. Tillett? Your lordship, let me... Save your words, you drunken wretch. Off you go, skedaddle. Don't make me ask twice. I do wish you wouldn't spend so much time with that fool. It's beneath a woman of your standard. It's sad, really. That dog urine they serve here has rather pickled the man's brain. You're being most unfair to him. Mr. Tillett is a nice man. Oh, come now, come now. I shall bid the adieu once more, but I do not wish for this to come between us. All the very best wishes for your excavation tomorrow, my dear. Thanks. So, he plotted with Mr. Shoulder to bring me here. And Mr. Shoulder was here, that was his glove. He has been lying to me all this time. These guys are worshippers of whatever it is there is in this, that barrel. So, the plot thickens. Another vision. So, Thomasina, the journal proves I'm telling you the truth, does it not? It does. Good. Now listen. I can help him again. We can help him together. That's the bait. All those years ago, your father entered this barrow with the goal of binding me within it. All because the people of Beuli had gotten it into their heads that sacks not were cause of their plight. I tell you, Thomasina, I were not. Your father botched his incantation, leaving me in this weakened state, stuck in this limbo. As for him, well, you know how he ended up. This, this doesn't sound right. Incantations. My father was, is, a man of... You don't know your father, Thomasina. How old were you? A child of not even five, six years? You need to enter this barrow and undo what your father did. The spell must be undone. Then not only will I regain my strength, but your father will too. But how do I... Blood. The truest symbol of life and death. It's the life which flows within you. But it's also death once it escapes. I don't understand. Worry not how you'll undo what's been done. When the time comes, you'll know exactly what to do. Time is short. Your father and I grow weaker by the hour. Go. Save your father. And that was it for today. Uh, if you want to catch me playing live, remember to follow me on Twitch. The link is down below. If you like this video, remember to hit the like button. And consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And I will be seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye.